Welcome to part two of what might be the sickest boat on YouTube at the moment, converted from gas to fully electric, pulling almost 19 kilowatts last night with my dad, who was here to help me film. In part one that I uploaded maybe a month ago, it wasn't unsuccessful, it was actually really good, it worked well. It was just a lot of questionable parts, like the motor mount being 3D printed, 3D printed adapter to the motor shaft, which is insane that that actually worked. In this video, that's all changed. Not only is the battery now protected with foam, but we're using not one, but three of those batteries. So we're now running at 84 volts, so much more power. Though we did have to heavily modify one of the batteries, which was totally uneventful. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. Looks uh, even more like a bomb. The Red Flyer 400 MPC never got burned, only after I poured gasoline and set fire to it. Instead I got this VESC which bankrupted me big time. Oh, we got it for free? It was $23,000. It's the C1000 and he could connect to it while I was out on the lake to change settings and parameters to optimize it all the way from India. Hold on a minute, who's he? All right, let's rewind a little. You need to know the difference between an electronic speed controller, ESC, and a Vetter electronic speed controller, also called a VESC. ESC, cheap, VESC, not so much. But not only is VESC open source, it's the cream of the crop for advanced control, which is why I can now do this. Look at that. That's how slow I can get it to spin. Look at this. That is just insane. The controller was sent all the way from three shoal motors in India to Sweden. Now how saucy is that chat? The CEO apparently for unknown reason didn't trust me. So he came in clutch and remotely through my PC fixed all the settings. Uh, petrol power uh, mode. Yeah, I understand. There is now a foot pedal for throttle control. So no more foot steering, even though I'm pretty sure you're gonna see some of that foot steering today either way. The ESC is water-cooled, but unfortunately the motor was damaged. So it was leaking inside the core and I couldn't get the water cooling to work. Here's some clips of that. Isn't that water right there? Yes it is, and even worse, the base aluminium plate of the motor had now formed a gap from the core, which now causes everything to leak. At this point, I really had no choice but to air cool the motor, so I brought in the 70 millimeter ducted fan. Well, it moves a lot of air, that's for sure. But that's what we wanted. Full throttle? Did you say full throttle? And as always, I live streamed all the work. But I'll be the first to say that most of the things didn't go according to plan. Hey, hey Pro, hey, welcome, hey, welcome back, back to the stream. stream. I mean, welcome back to another stream. Let's go. The diameter of the lug almost is large enough to not even engage with, with the B minus terminal. No, that didn't bind whatsoever. Hmm. Oh, fuck. Oh well. No, it doesn't work. Okay, goddamn. Oh, it's not waterproof? Oh, great. Eventually, later than sooner, things started to work out. I got rid of the flyer EC and 3D printed a custom mount for the VESC, just so that I didn't have to extend the motor wires. PLA motor mount we had before. Glass fiber reinforced nylon. Sounds fancy, I hope it's strong as fuck. Here's the 3D printed plastic adapter that survived part one, but it's now been replaced with stainless steel. And here's what it looks like. Shiny. Isn't that sick? I was this close, I was this close of not having a camera. Almost immediately something went wrong with the motor and it did this another four times. <laughs> 
Similarly to the knocking in part one, the motor would be absolutely fine and all of a sudden die. The motor shut off, fuck me. Here I'm basically just saying that I want to ramp it up slowly. If it works, that means we're reaching the maximum amp setting on the controller and it's an easy fix. Uh, I do have the motor shut off occasionally. When I pull enough amps, it seems like the boat just, the controller just says, no, I'm not gonna deal with it. I think that's up to the settings. We could definitely get it fixed. And just like that, I could test it again, and right away I felt it. Yes! At this point, I just got rid of the wings. They are mainly support to reach planing faster, but probably took a chunk of the top speed anyways. The adapter and motor mount are precisely the type of parts that PCBWay can make. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing it's in their name. And with their instant quote feature, you will get their pricing up front, which is really appreciated. For the past years, I've mainly used their 3D printing and CNC service, but check out their website in the description below to find out what parts they can make you. I'm all alone here today, so I gotta fix the ramp before we can put it in. Let's see if we can get this boat in. If it came down crashing, it wouldn't be too bad for the video. Sometimes my genius is frightening. Okay, let's go. I have the GoPro with me so you can see what happens. I also have a GPS meter. A lot of you wanted to know the speed, so let's see what it is. Here we go. I have no academic evidence for this, but I think in part one, we got about 35 to 45 kilometers an hour. Check this out. We got 52.3 kilometers. It's a bit of a rat's nest, but I'm running the EDF, the water pump and a temperature sensor on this 12 volt battery that is plugged in. And I can control, and I can control the speed of the EDF by turning this knob. It seems to work reasonably well because I can read the temperature sensor right now and it's 52 degrees from that run that we did. How long was that? Maybe two minutes. So <laughs> it could be better. Water cooling would probably improve it a lot, but 
air cooling is all we have right now. Here's a clip going full throttle from standstill. The amount of battery you would need to make this even remotely viable is insane. These three batteries and about as many grand in price gave me a range of five kilometers. Going full speed, 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour, would last six minutes. Although the motor would melt before you had the chance. Get a man. Okay. We peaked at 19.5 kilowatts at almost 400 amps and did 52 kilometers an hour on an electric motor at a shy 6-7 kilograms that is rated for 120 volts. I already have an idea for part 3 that I want to run by you guys and that's to build a jet drive unit just like the two we had on the electric surfboard. This is the main housing printed in PLA that will hold the stages and motor mounts. Get rid of the entire outboard engine and replace it with a jet drive with an impeller. That sounds awesome. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give a thumbs up. That really just makes my day. And follow me on Twitch to watch my live streams. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have an awesome day. Bye. It's gonna take even longer this time to get to the camera to shut it off. All right, ciao guys. Ciao guys.